All right, hey guys, here we have an antique GE top mount ceiling fan. Yesterday we had an antique replica. Here we have uh, an actual antique, so it's pretty cool. This is my first restoration job. Um, I mean, I guess I kind of worked on the round nose that you see in the background. I tore that apart and cleaned it up, but that was about it. This one, I actually... Um, so, what happened was yesterday... I was working on that 1886 and I had to restain the blades because they were so bad. And I don't know. For some reason, I decided to do these two and that's kind of what started the whole project. So I did the blades and I'm like, hmm, kind of want to finish the rest of the fan. So um, pretty much since I got, I had the mindset that I want to clear coat this thing. I thought it just would look really cool clear coated. And uh, I think it turned out really good. Unfortunately, I do not have an authentic, an authentic canopy for it. That's, the Turk canopy. Um, however, the patina on it works really well with this fan, so that's why I decided to use it rather than wait to find one. That was the reason I didn't test the Turk for so long, is because it didn't come with a canopy, and this one didn't either, unfortunately. I don't think it came with blade to blade bracket screws, but that was the only other thing that was missing. So, yeah, um, the blades turned out they're like night and day compared to how they were. Uh, they were covered and not covered, but you know, they had splatter from paint. Um, it was actually lead based paint, so I had to get a respirator and stuff for that. Get some negative air in here. And uh, yeah, I just kind of buffed off all the paint and ended up leaving all the original patina behind, which is really nice. Uh, there's still a little, there's a couple spots that are a little buffed out more than they should have been, but they had thicker thicker paint areas, so there wasn't much I could do. Uh, one of the blades has a little chip in it, but other than that, it's almost perfect. The switch needs to be worked on a little more. I kind of messed with it, but I couldn't get it quite right. It, um, it doesn't go through the speeds exactly how it should. I mean, it, in order, but um, I think some one of the contacts might be stressed or worn out because some you have to pull it a couple times for it to go through each speed. I mean, you can pull it 10 times before it actually goes down a speed. Um, but enough, enough of me rambling on, let's get to it. This one has the narrower blades. Although I do believe they are authentic GE blades. I think this is basswood if I'm not mistaken. It's the typical wood that Emerson and I GE used. So originally I clear coated the rotor and I was going to leave it at that, but I decided to do the whole thing. I think I originally got the idea when I did my Emerson, I guess technically speaking that was my first restoration, but it didn't turn out nearly as good because it still has missing parts and needs like everything. So there's a couple theories on this fan. Some say it was used as an attic fan, it would mount like... I guess in an attic and then you'd have like an open section there and it would suck all the air out of the house and into the attic. Uh, these blade brackets are stamped and they have like a little curve to them. So it's got a down and updraft spot and the other two holes obviously would reverse the blades. Uh, the other theory was just for low ceilings which I find to be a little bit more believable but who knows what they were originally intended for, unless we have like actual articles stating what they were meant for. I guess we don't really know. Um, because of the whole switch situation, I am using a solid state control. The first one I found happened to produce a perfect range of speeds on this. So, anyways, let's go through that. This fan does also have a replacement bearing. It, uh, it's actually using a Hunter original bearing. The original bearing was, the bearing that was original to the fan was pretty pitted. And I didn't want a chance having it be real noisy, so I ditched it. Um, it probably would have ran fine, but it was just gonna be a lot louder and it wasn't worth taking apart a second time. 
So I put this in there. This is actually a used bearing. The bearing that's in here came from my black original, and then I had a well, an actual brand new bearing that I put in that original. So this one's a little pitted and a little bit noisy, but it's not too bad. It's got a little rough spot on one of the chases, but it's not bad. So yeah, this gives a great range of speeds. I mean, it, very seldomly do you get an antique that goes this slow. I mean, the round nose in the back one does too, but that took a lot of tweaking. Many hours worked on that. I mean, this is just straight oil, and then bam, slow speed. Yeah, you don't you don't get in a stick low speed on an antique too often. Anyways, let's go. We'll give it a we'll do a quarter of a turn, I guess, because there's not really much of a difference. And it would be even slower than that. Um, no, that's probably not where it would be at. It was slower than that before because I had the bridge and freezer going. So there's that. Let's give it another quarter of a turn. So we're already at half a turn. We're half half power right now, and um, we're just getting to a decent low or a reasonable low speed. It's a little faster than normal low speed, but it's not too bad. But I'm gonna give it like a just a slight turn, and it'll bring us to like a normal medium speed. residential well, or medium speed. Give it another, say, 16th of a turn, I guess. And that brings us to about where the factory low speed is. So that's what a standard Good quality residential fan will be. Uh, maybe a little more. So, yeah, that's about right there, is about standard K55 on high. As you can imagine, this thing's powerful and like perfectly balanced. It might be moving ever so slightly. I can't quite tell. Yeah, it might be like rocking a little bit, but it's to be expected. Affect uh, spin down too much, but it obviously is going to be a little louder. Or I shouldn't say that, probably will affect spin down a little bit because each rotation it catches in like four spots. I think it's got like four or five little pit marks from the bearing sitting like that. So this fan is like 2% Jimmy John's. It has the bearing out of a Jimmy John's original. How special! I added new lead wires too. This came with, uh, I think, 12 gauge solid wire, which is kind of a pain to um, work with, especially when you're talking about trying to cram it into an electrical box. So I took that off and just added a normal, um, I don't know, 14 or 16 gauge strand in one of the two. Anyways, there's my 
GE. Hope you guys enjoyed, and thanks for watching.